Hello, everybody, and this is The Advisor with Stacy. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. She is an expert on our show. She is part of our podcast community. She also has her own podcast, and she is a guitar instructor, and she um, helps people uh, learn the guitar, improve with the guitar, and she really has a great way of helping you understand the tones, the sounds, the music, the beauty of it. And she's just an outstanding teacher. And so everybody, here's Charlotte. Charlotte, tell everybody a little about yourself and tell everybody what resistance versus truth means. Yeah, so that, that's a strange title. I was probably like, whoa, it's resistance. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, wanted to, I wanted to get your feedback too. Like you said, I want you to be fresh, which we always do. You know, you never know what I'm going to say and vice versa. Yeah, so I've been teaching guitar for over 50 years. Oh, my. And um, and I've written a bunch of books. And what I've been doing um, more publicly, I've always done it with my teaching in with one-on-one. -on -one, but what I've been doing more in the last few years is more about is helping people more about learning and self-awareness and how you can use that for your learning and expansion. And so the things that I'm teaching and, and what I wrote about in You and Your Guitar really are for everyone, whether you're a musician or not. If you're a musician, whatever instrument, if you don't play an instrument, these are still qualities. You know how sometimes there are things that you say, oh, you can learn everything about life in X. You know, like when you learn guitar, you can learn everything about life, you know, so. Um, so yeah, there are these qualities. And, and to me, learning is, huge. I mean, it's everything, whether whatever topic it is, you know, we always want to keep learning. So, and that's what you and your guitar, as I said, the most recent book that I wrote is about as some of the stuff that we talk about on these podcasts, commitment and, you know, different confidence, different qualities in your life. So what I, I really want to circle back to something that I had mentioned in the last podcast, the last podcast, we were talking about uh, hearing music and how a musician hears differently than a non-musician and how you can learn to hear like a musician. And then you will propel yourself forward in your musicianship by doing that. Or you'll just have more fun as a listener and enrich your life. And, and in that conversation, I was talking about how it's there are a lot of people who go to teachers who insist on just having a connection from symbol to where you place your fingers on the instrument and right. how it robs you of the soul and spirit of the sound and making a sound. And and in that, I dropped the comment that said, you know, guitar players, a lot of guitar players never deal with that because they don't go to lessons because they would just resist they don't want that. They want to go straight to music, which is a wonderful thing. And I think we should always be with the music, with the sound. But the drawback there is that that word resist, because if you resist learning, well, then you miss out on a lot and you create limits. You know, I I titled my website years ago, Limitless Guitar. And so, you know, that's really what I'm always talking about is how to lift limits. And, mm -hmm. and resistance was just the definition of the word. You know, you know you're going to be limited right there. So I'm going to talk about resistance. And in thinking about it, I always do a lot of thinking about these things before we meet. And in thinking about it, I came around to something that is, it, you, you can test yourself. I think you'll find it is that so often um, resistance is because we're not seeing the truth of a situation. Right. So that's the resistance versus truth. And again, this applies to everything, but I'm going to put it in the guitar context because that's what I do. So um, so the thing about resistance is that it holds you back. We know that, but it's tricky because we usually don't know we have it. Yeah. So identifying it, recognizing it, and identifying resistance in your life, in your practice, whatever, is step one. And Oftentimes, that's all you need to do. Once you realize it's resistance instead of this untrue belief, then you just soar right through. And, and if that doesn't work, well, then I got some other things we can talk about. But the first I want to go there, untrue beliefs would be, um, well, I'm going to call these like level one. These are like level one um, beliefs, first level mm -hmm. one. 
say um, one that people are common are aware of commonly is, oh, I just don't have time to practice. Well, mm -hmm. you probably do. You know, I mean, if if you want to learn and you've engaged maybe lessons or a course or something and you're, you've made this sort of commitment to it, but I'd say sort of because it doesn't feel like you're truly committed to it, well, then yeah. you may be saying a lot, I don't have time to practice. Well, unless you're in a situation that you're probably not in, if you've chosen this time frame in which to learn this, you know, a situation like you're a caregiver or you're working 12 hour days at your job or something like that, well, you're probably not going to be signing up for this anyway. But if, right. if you're sort of in the kind of, if you're in the situation where you would be doing this, um, then it's a matter of prioritizing, you know? Mm -hmm. So we all have the same amount of time in every day. It's just what we choose to do with it. So that's a way of just getting honest. The truth is I prefer to sit and watch a movie than to play guitar. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you face that, wait a minute, I chose to watch this movie. I chose to be on social media. I chose to go take a walk. All the things that you fill your day with make those more conscious choices and then you right. can solve that problem okay so another sort of first level i'm gonna keep them made that up um resistance is to learning learning resistances and this is very common among guitar players because you're like well this famous guitar player that i love didn't know how to read notes or didn't know music theory those yeah. are the two biggest ones. Oh, it's a waste of time. I don't need to know that if these people do. Well, first of all, most guitar or most music teachers will tell you, yeah, but you're not this person. <laughs> if you could do it the way he or she did it, well, go. You know, the other thing is that's a narrow path. Like there's only a certain amount of stuff you can do without broadening your information. Yeah. And then... Um, but the other thing is, it's it's not true that it's a waste of time. And this is a thing that, you know, you really have to, to look at. Because if you believe something's true, then it's you have to step back and really open up to consider something else. But I can pretty much guarantee you that you will never, ever find any musician who reads notes or who knows music theory that says, Boy, that was a waste of time learning that. I never use it. It's right. not going to happen. It's not going to make you a worse player. It's not going to waste your time. So, so in overcoming this resistance, you know, if you just look at it, be truthful. You know, it, which is hard for us to do because we have certain beliefs. We've caught on to what other people have told us or what we feel is convenient or just it's an excuse or whatever. But it'll help you. You know, it'll help you if you if you start looking at these things and go, but wait, maybe that's for that person. But what about me? You know, I want to lift some limits. So how am I going to lift these limits? I need to shift some beliefs. Right. Another one is like, oh, a metronome will make you, playing with a metronome will make you sound like a robot. <laughs> well, playing with a drummer doesn't make you sound like a robot. You know, so <laughs> if you want to get better and you're stuck, or maybe you haven't gotten stuck yet and you don't want to get stuck, then you can start looking at these beliefs and saying, but are they really true? You know, are they really true? Right. So, so sometimes doing those things will, will be all you need to get to a place that you can go to another level. Right. Then there's what I'm going to describe as second level resistance. And that is a second level to the resistance. Maybe it's a better way to think of it. And that's, there's a deeper reason that you're holding on to these beliefs or that you're not getting into the practice room or whatever. And right. they're, they're beliefs that we all deal with. Mm -hmm. And everybody that listens to your show works with these kinds of things every day because they're aware people. People right. who listen to your show are conscious people. So, um, and there are a lot of other conscious people that don't yet know about your show, so we have to tell them about it. <laughs> 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 but... But those are things like poor self-image, a belief that you're not smart enough, a belief right. that you could never do something because you weren't born with a certain ability. Um, those are not true beliefs. And those are really hard to draw loose. Again, you know, when you believe something, you believe it. 
So, so if you want to step into a new place, you got to step back, open up and say, you know what, maybe I can believe something different. Yeah. Very, very common. I mean, some of the people I'm closest to will tell me, oh, I could never, no matter how hard I tried and how long I studied, I could never know theory like you do. I'm like, right. Yeah, you actually could. You certainly could. The thing is, people tend to believe, and I think this is a lot of, you know, what we get through the media, social media and so forth, is that things are easy and quick. Mm -hmm. you see somebody playing an instrument it's so easy <laughs> but it takes a lot of time so mm -hmm. if you want to know theory you have to do theory right over and over and over and over and over again people say oh I took a semester of theory in college and I forgot it and it didn't do me any good no it's not going to do you any good that way you have to use it yeah you, know, you have to bring it into your life and use it. Um, so, so that taking the time, you know, it's the myth, myth of how much time things take or how capable you are inherently. Right. Uh, my mind, here's another one. My mind just doesn't work that way. Okay. If it doesn't work that way, let's find out how to open it and shift it until it does. Right. Right. So that's a huge one. Because we are all, we all tend to think we are just who we are, how we came in. That is, I just don't think that there's any truth in that at all. And right. and it's not just a belief I've chosen, although I have chosen that belief because it serves me in my life. But I've also watched it. I've watched people who didn't seem smart and they studied and learned to study and study, and they went skyrocket up into their field. People yeah. who were musical, same thing. So, no, you may not have been born with these tendencies. You may not have been raised in a family that nurtured these tendencies. You may not have those. You may right. not be able to do this, but it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to do it. Right. Okay? So I want to empower you. And and I'm telling the truth, you know, so, so that's good. Okay. And then there's another one of those uh, deeper level is just fear of the unknown. You know, like doing something that's different. And and that also is tied into, I'm scared I'm not going to be able to do it. You know, that, that always kind of comes back to that. And I'm going to feel stupid, even just in myself, in my own room by myself. You can feel very stupid. Um, and then there's some other things that I talk about in my books and my teaching about just things you can do for yourself or your teacher can help you with if you have a good coach or teacher a learning style. So here's another one. Oh, I am a visual learner. Okay, mm -hmm. now you're going to be an auditory learner because we're doing music. <laughs> oh, no, I'm a visual learner. Well, okay, now let's learn how to be an auditory learner as well. Yeah. So, you know, getting out of that, I want to go somewhere, but but I won't go somewhere. You know, I won't take yeah. the steps to do that because I have this firm belief and I'm attached to that belief. Right. Yeah. Can you, I mean, does this resonate with you or do you, can you, do you have any thoughts about in your own life or people that you're close to where you've seen people be able to shift or see a place where a shift would be helpful to them? Yeah. Well, you know, when you talk about auditory learning, I was always good at visual learning and, but, you know, I remember when I had, um, when I, when I wasn't able to use, I'm left-handed, when I wasn't able to use my left hand, I started using my right hand and I was able to learn how to write and do everything in my right hand as well as I could in my left hand, but my dominant is my left, but I took the time to actually learn how to write because I had to and do stuff more with my right hand and I actually was able to shift so I could now use both. But originally, you know, I always thought, well, I'm dominant in my left. My own, I can only use my left. But yes, you, you can do both. You know, you could, even though you're a visual learner, you could still learn auditory. You know, it's just it's uh, it's 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 taking the time to actually learn the skills and we're capable of learning the skills. It's just having that mindset, that proper mindset and being open to it. And then, you know, and then if it, it comes hard, then you just break it up into smaller pieces, I think, you know, until you get it, you know, you just, you keep, you know, you take little baby steps and eventually, 
you know, you start learning it, you know, um, and it comes, it comes easier and easier the more you practice. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and mm -hmm. also, I was thinking about this yesterday in the conversation, um, somebody telling me about, oh, your mind, you can, I've seen you, you can do this and that and the other. I'm like, yeah, but I started thinking about what, is, what am I doing in my mind that if people go, I just can't do that. Yeah. And it is a place that I go. <laughs> There's a place I go <laughs> and mentally. And and I I think probably everybody that's a good problem solver or um, sees more than one thing at a time uh, is creative. Let's say that has this place to go. And when you go there, it's like a commitment. Like you're not going to leave there until you get the answer. But you're not going to be going for, for the answer and sort of this external thing like pounding at it. You're going to be allowing, allowing. So if the place that I go is an empty place, it's like where you go when you meditate. Right. You know? um, and I think that's a that's an inner world that if you're trying, if you're constantly trying to do something that you don't feel like you're good at, you're pounding at it from the exterior. And so, yeah. you, you know, you have to take the time and the patience, be kind to yourself, be gentle, go away from anything that's competitive or would give you a grade or anyone else that you feel like might be judging you, whether they are or not. Go to a private, quiet space every time. Like I would never practice guitar in front of somebody, never. And I go to this place easily, but, but it's not going to work for me to practice my instrument with somebody else there because I got to get away from all of that. And so that mental emotional space, I think is what we want to nourish, nurture. Um, and you have to find it yourself, but everybody finds it. You know, everybody has it and everybody can find it. You know, maybe you can find it just by like, where, what, it, what does it feel like? What does my mind feel like when I'm daydreaming? Right. You know, um, and then start to cultivate that more and more and more. Uh, but it's a relaxation is a big part of that. Yeah. And non self judgment, you know, you right. step out of um, expecting results of any kind, especially on a time frame. Yeah. Uh, be curious, be just have fun and that's I think that's a big thing like why they say kids learn so well kids minds aren't really they don't they don't learn better they have usually less concentration um and they don't have a lot of life experience that can feed into it so it, they don't have a lot of advantages over an adult mind but the big advantage they have is innocence yeah yeah. So if we can step into that place where we're just learning because it's fun, you know? Right. Yeah. And that le resistance to learning, you know, like when I said, nobody ever said this is a waste of time to learn this. You know, just learning stuff is fun. Learning mm -hmm. stuff is good for you. Yeah. You know? If you learn something like one of the resistances to learning things in a particular topic, I know is if you, if the student feels like it's irrelevant to their goals, I feel like learning is just going to help me if I learn about how the car runs and I'm yeah. never going to fix a car. I'm still ahead of the game, you know. I, right. I, waste of time I learned something how many of us just learn a foreign language let's go get books or, or recordings or sign up for something so we can learn another language just because we want to learn language yeah and and you can do that with anything else you just open your mind and say yeah just learning for the sake of learning it's right good. exactly yeah. yeah yeah if if you put your mindset to it and you that's and you you take the time out to do it there there is no stopping you you know right and i feel like you you know you're a creative person and i feel like you know when you get to be an adult and you've you've been generating ideas easily and quickly 
uh, for a while, you just kind of take it for granted and don't realize that your mind is going to that place. You know, yeah. that's why it was interesting for me to go, okay, what am I doing during this time? Mm -hmm. But okay, so when you when you have a problem to solve, you're trying to create something new, maybe a new project or something. Is there a particular time in your day or a particular activity that you are doing when usually the ideas come to you? Um, I guess sometimes they just flow into my head. I guess sometimes I just get like one little idea and then it stems to a, like a branch of ideas mm -hmm. and then I react on them. You know, mm -hmm. if I think it's a good idea and usually it is, I, I react on it. I get involved. I start creating it. And then um, I slowly, you know, it might take me a while. I might put it aside, but I always go back to it and keep trying to create it. I like that, you know, going back to it because that ties back into it takes time. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, and, and the part that I was saying about be gentle and kind to yourself, don't push it. You think about the energy of resistance. Yeah. Okay, think about the energy of resistance. If you meet resistance with that same energy, that same hard pushing energy, you're yeah. just going to be in a struggle. You have to meet oh, yeah. resistance with yielding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you yield to it and you just go, ah, it'll come. The yeah. learning will come, the whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sure, there is some of the just do it if you can't get up off the couch and you need to go do something. But a right. lot of times that ends up where you're beating yourself up, where you don't yes. feel good about yourself. It's very true. For me, um, morning. Morning is the time. And I mean, yeah. early morning, as soon as I get up, the first hour or two of the day, it's like bam, 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 bam. All the answers come to me in my sleep. They do. I mean, I'm I'm given... I'm given information as I sleep and I wake up and I go, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then um, anytime, like every day I muck out the, the paddock for my horses, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. It's like my favorite time because they're eating. I can just hear them. Everything's peaceful. And, I, and my mind can go where it wants to go. I've created, I've written arrangements in my head while I was mucking out the paddock. I got the idea for my first um uh, video a comprehensive instructional video for my webs my next website i get i get all these ideas either mucking out the paddock or taking a shower uh, because your mind is relaxed yeah so if you're not pushing it pushing it pushing it, oh i got to think of an idea i've got a deadline no, that's not going to be as productive it's right gonna, and it's not going to make you feel as good as if you set yourself up to learn or to have ideas or to break through resistances. Yes. Yeah, you set yourself up by by creating a place and a time, you know, and maybe you don't have to create it. You take a shower every day. You right. Know? You just created it. Just don't listen to the news while you're taking a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so learning takes time. And yes. it takes time. Some of these other things we've talked about repetition and and you said going back to it at some point that's a creative you know you're talking about creativity at that point but it's the same same sort of um environment that's required yeah, yeah. and i think I, I when you go back to it you get more ideas and mm -hmm. you find out you figure out where the floors were previously and you fix them you know because while you're practicing I think you you go back to it and you're like, oh wait, if I if I did it like this, it sounds much better, you know. And then and so I think by you know if you if you tried to get everything done in one day and you try to do all this practicing in one day, I think you're going to burn yourself out. And mm -hmm. then not going then you're going to lose interest because then you're not going to have that energy and that motivation and that inspiration. But if you do it in baby steps and you you and you don't worry about finishing a lesson but maybe just starting it or you know beginning it you know that will give you the inspiration for the next day to do a little bit more and a little bit more and to try different ways of learning and using different parts of your brain to, to grasp the music and the sound and the tone and and how to play and so forth yeah and then the more you do that the less resistance is an issue yes mm -hmm. yeah exactly. so 
And then when resistance comes up, then hopefully each time you'll be able to recognize it more quickly and go, oh, that's just re resistance. Yeah. I can, feel, <laughs> I can say, oh, I know what to do with that. That's just resistance. Yeah. You know, I can walk through this. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's the, the trick is to just practice recognizing when resistance comes up. Right. And sometimes it's not really a negative thing sometimes it's discernment like but mm -hmm. well, that's really not good for me you know somebody's pushing me to do something now maybe somebody's pushing you to do something with your health that it doesn't match your beliefs and how you should go forward with your health and so no Re right. you resist it that's a, a good thing to do sometimes it's timing sometimes it's like i'm really open to learning theory or whatever Yes. But it's not a good time. I know better than to try and make a commitment right now because I'll I won't be able to, to carry through with it because of right. everything in my life or going on in my mind or these other commitments I have. So you're not resisting it; you're just postponing it. You know, right? Mm -hmm. That's so but, true. But that self awareness, you'll you'll get more and more in touch with which it is. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I, I think, you know, with resistance, I think it's, it's you know, by opening yourself up and letting your creativity flow and having an open mind and not being afraid of failure or not being afraid of not being able to do it, you know, right away, that resistance level, I think will decline, you know, and you'd be more open to try. I think the biggest problem of people is their the feeling of failure, the feeling of of not getting it, not being good enough, um, you know, or having, you know, a friend or a family member, you know, say something negative, you know, it's just having that, you know, those, those personal insecurities that we all carry as human beings and not wanting someone to criticize you and you, cause you know, you're just learning, you're just getting it, you're making mistakes, but you don't want to hear the constructive criticism. You don't want to hear, you know, because even though someone might say it in a nice way, hopefully, you know, it still, you know, might be bothersome to the person too. You know, I think that we're so used to thinking of good, bad, right, wrong, you know, duality. And who's mm -hmm. the best? Like people talk about who's the best guitarist, really? Because I just had a conversation the other day with one of my students. He was talking about like, sometimes he has to, he doesn't realize, as, is he good or not? I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? I said, you know, I could tell you who the 10 best guitarists in the world are right now. And I could probably guarantee you haven't heard of a single one of them. <laughs> or think of all the people alive today who don't know who Bob Dylan or the Beatles are. are. I mean, accepted, very, yeah. very famous and accepted. You know, Louis Armstrong or, you know, some of the best musicians of their time that people don't know they're gone yeah you know, there's always going to be somebody better than you there's always going to be somebody that has more attention gets more likes on social media whatever Com competition is not going to give you you can't ever get enough you can never yeah. get enough. it's kind of like um, wanting material things there's never yeah. going to satisfy you you have to have to have that intrinsic value in the things that you're doing you have to yeah. love it and and get fed by it for you. Right. You're the one you do it for. So that's why I think it, I keep saying, you know, be gentle, be kind, be alone. Right. Then, then you can share it when you're ready to share it. And 100%. then if somebody doesn't like it, well, then you can say, oh, okay. Everybody's not going to like me. Everybody's not going to like my music. Right. You like what you like, I like what I like. We just, you know, do our lives with love. Exactly. Yeah. That's so true. That's so and, true. And if we're always thinking about, am I good? Am I good enough? Or what do they think? What do they think? You know, we're we're always going to be unhappy. Yeah. Wherever you are right now is perfect. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are with your music is perfect. And then you take the next step and that's perfect. And you take the next step and that's perfect. And sometimes I'm you take a step and you go, woo, that's really great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what were you going to say? 
Oh, I was just going to say, um, I remember talking to a coach and they were saying, you can never, you can never com uh, compare yourself to somebody because one person can be on level 33 and the other person could just be starting out. And even though you look up to these people or you mentor these people, you're never going to be on their level the same time they're on their level. You know, like it's, it, you just can't compare yourself. You have to just look at yourself and, and just focus on you, you know, don't compare yourself to others. Just focus on you as a person and I get you're you know, unique. Yeah. No one can ever have what you have. You may be right. thinking, oh, I can't have what this other person has. Well, they're probably thinking they can't have what you have. Right. Exactly. You know? And would you trade? No. I don't think anybody would trade if they knew, you know, what all was going on with somebody else. It's great to be, and that's why you and your guitar. It's it's a relationship. It's a very personal thing. Yeah, you're playing music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's what's so cool about it. What? That's what's so cool about it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's so and I, It's it's personal, and everybody has their own style, and they do uh -huh. it differently. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. And you always come across those people who kind of do it more different than others. And those are the people who stand out too. You know, the ones that are, are not afraid to be themselves. You know, they're not copying off anybody. They're just being them. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times too, is like when you get to that point where you're confident enough to, to, and in your own guitar playing, and you can be who you want to be and create that image you want to create, you know, that's when you start to get noticed, you know, because the people respect that, I think. Yeah, and and then there's another thing that it, you have to be careful. I mean, there's so many traps on on all the things. Um, some people fall into a trap, but like I I want to be creative. I want to be just who I am and not like anybody else. But they don't have a foundation for that yet. Yeah. So, so the way you do that usually is you copy, you copy and yeah. you copy, and then you you start to springboard off of all that those skills that you have and the experience that right. you have. And you, your own unique self can is being expressed. Yes, but you don't have to be. You don't have to do anything. You don't. There, there's no rules. You know, just if you're open to learning and you find these places that you feel resistance, you'll start to be able to recognize it in your body. Yeah, you know, you can feel. Oh, that felt like resistance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to get, emphasize on some important factors, what are some things you'd like to emphasize, you know, some turning points for today's conversation? Yeah, I think just what I was kind of talking about there at the end is that um, to just make it a point to self-witness and find any places that feel like resistance and if you can rise above those or through those then observe what it does for you and lifting limits lifting limits right. whatever you're doing yeah and make it fun it's just fun yeah. like it's going to be a fun thing it's not like you've got to be better you got to do better or anything like that it's so yeah be more free oh wow there was something hard that now is soft and nice you know yeah yeah i like that a lot I like that a lot. Yeah. I think I think people really have to, you know, break through their um their their insecurities and and make time and you know, if they really have an interest, you know, don't be lazy about it, you know? Make time. If you really want to do something, you, there's always time in a day to do it. it the, the fact is that you want to do it, you know. And with the techniques and tools that, you know, that you teach, I think anyone could easily pick it up. You know, and uh, now with the services that you you offer, can you tell us a little about those services on your website? Yeah, um, the services are lessons and coaching. So you know, if you want to come on a regular basis on online, um, two lessons as you would think of lessons coaching is going to involve a lot of really personalized lessons will be personalized too and will involve some coaching but coaching is more for people who have played for a while and they want to move to another level and they're kind of stuck you know and so we'll work through some of these kind of things that we talk about on the podcast 
Only mm -hmm. I can do it. I can help you on an individual basis and really get down to the smaller details. And then um, I have the virtual studio, which is full of lessons, audio, visual, and text lessons, and some courses. So, mm -hmm. so I do a lot with ear training. Um, and then I have a, a line of instructional books that are also there on the website. Um, yeah, that's the main thing is the lessons, the the uh, virtual studio and the books and videos, the main things, lots and lots of articles, <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of articles to help you out. Um, and where, where can people find you? It's at limitless-guitar.com. Yeah. And you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and something else, I guess. What is it? I say this, you should remember mine. But like, yeah, you're, you're on Facebook, you're on LinkedIn, you're LinkedIn on... Twitter, and YouTube. And YouTube, yes. Yeah. I knew there was one more. <laughs> yeah, I did too, there for a minute, I lost it. Well, I didn't do anything on YouTube for so many years, and then I, I just recently started posting on there again, so I had to get the little icon on my site, go, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, I send out um, newsletter twice a month that has no advertising in it. You'll never be on any lists or anything, but each one will help you with, I hope, that's my intention, I write to help you with uh, your playing. Right. So, so you should, you know, if you go to the site, go there. There's some free ebooks you can get. Um, like I said, there's all the articles. You can get a free 30 days in the virtual studio. You can learn an amazing amount in 30 days for free. And then even if you decide to stay, it's only $9.95 a month. So, and you can leave anytime. Won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so there's a lot of stuff you can get for free or very cheap. And then there's, you know, you can put together bundles of books and videos to make it really very reasonable. And then the main thing that I think everybody... Um, could benefit from is the you and your guitar right so there's a lot of stuff yeah it is a lot of stuff and what I love about you is you're so compassionate you know you love what you do oh. and you can truly really see that you do it because you love it you know mm -hmm. I think that makes the, the all the difference especially when you have a teacher who really loves what they're doing I think it, it makes a big difference when you have a teacher who really cares about the student and really wants to see the student succeed and you're definitely one of those people I do really care about the students. <laughs> and so, you know, if you want to come be my student, just write me. I mean, also, you know, I'm, I'm, I really like to hear from people. So you don't yeah. even have to be a student to email me, ask me questions, say hello, let me know you're out there. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And tell me yes. if you, you know, tell me if you found me through the podcast. I'd like to know that too. Yeah. I, you know, this has been amazing. I really, I really like today's talk. I love about resistance, you know, because I think people are very resistant, you know, and, and I hope, hopefully this discussion, you know, really makes people realize that, you know, if, if you just, if you really have a dream to really want to play, you know, you can make the time and, and it doesn't have to be so difficult, you know, baby steps, you know, and yeah. you can get where you really want to go and, and actually learn to play. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think what you're doing is great. Thank you. And I think what you're doing is great, too. <laughs> and I appreciate uh -huh. you having me on. Uh, yeah. And I appreciate you also. You're a Thank fabulous you. teacher. Thank you. <laughs> you have a great day. You too. Till next time. Next, till next time. Mm -hmm.